Okay, good morning guys. We're going to do the latest lesson, the last lesson in conic sections, section 10.4, which is hyperbolas. And most students think this is the most difficult of the three conics that they have to learn. I think it's the easiest um, because the formulae are, I don't know, just a little more straightforward, but you'll decide on your own. Let's talk about the definition first. Hyperbola is the set of all points, x, y, and the plane, for which the absolute value of the difference of the distances from two distinct fixed points, called the foci, is constant. Well, what does that even mean? Well, first of all, let me make this a little bit bigger. The hyperbola is a disjoint graph. So this and this make up a hyperbola uh, with a horizontal axis. All right, it's called the transverse axis in a hyperbola, and these are called branches. All right, so it is one graph, it's one picture, but they're not attached, okay? So they're called branches. And the idea is <clears throat> that the difference of the distances from the foci means the following. If I come over here, oh, I don't want that color, hang on, green, I guess, green. If I come over here, let me make sure it's thick too. Thickest. If I come over here and start at this foci and go to any point, so we're going to this point here, right? So remember, all of these these branches are made up of infinitely many points called x, y, okay? So this is some distance here from the foci to this point. They're calling it D2. And then there is also a distance from this focus to this point called D1, right? And the idea is, is that the absolute value of the difference, so D2 minus D1 absolute value, because we're talking about distance, is constant. It's always going to be constant. And in fact, it's going to always equal this length right here, which is called your transverse axis, okay? So let's go over those definitions. You don't have to worry about that one too much, um, but because um, you're not necessarily going to use that concept per se, but anyway, let's look at the lingo. So we have the transverse axis over here, right? And that's just the axis between the vertices. So from here to here is called the transverse axis. And the vertices are at the bumps of the hyperbola. So here's one vertex and here's the other vertex. Okay, and in fact, I took this picture too from the web because I want to show you something. All right, the length of the transverse axis is 2a, all right, and you'll see that better in another picture, okay? So the length of the transverse axis is 2 times a. So you're going to have a, b, c's in here again. Um, in fact, let me see, is there another? Yeah, this is the picture I wanted, so let me, whoop, let me bring this picture over here and blow this one up if it's possible. It doesn't like to get bigger for some reason when I, maybe it's too big now, sorry. Yeah, it, it doesn't like to get bigger, so I'm going to have to blow it up. Okay, so in this picture here, here's my transverse axis right here. Here's a vertex, here's a vertex, okay. Now you can extend this transverse axis out. So. Um, it's going like so. Okay, so over to the side I said the following. So I'm just going to scroll over. I said if x comes first, bring this down here. If x comes first, the transverse axis is horizontal. So I'm talking about the formula. If y comes first, the transverse axis is vertical. Why? Because the positive term dictates the orientation of the transverse axis. All right, so if x comes first, it's horizontal, right, uh, parallel to the x-axis. And if y comes first, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be uh, parallel to the y-axis. And the foci are inside <coughs> the hyperbolae, um, just like they were inside the ellipse or inside the parabola. All right. <coughs> the other thing we have in these is asymptotes. So those dotted cross lines. So this one here and this one here, right? These are asymptotes and asymptotes always pass through the center of the um, hyperbola. 
This is the center right here. So the center is in between the two vertices. This length here is A. From the center to the vertex is called A. And this is called A. So that's why the length of the transverse axis is 2 times A. Also, the distance, let's see, can I find another color? Blue. The distance from the center to a foci, or a focus, is C. So from here to here is C. So the length between the fo foci is 2C. All right. Now, this is the weird thing. <clears throat> First of all, these, I'm going to go back to the asymptotes real quick. The asymptotes go through the corners of this, this rectangle that we create. We have to create it. Okay. Um, now, this rectangle is going to have dimensions 2a by 2b. Okay. It's going to be 2a by 2b. Well, where did the b come from? Well, there's something called covertices. So let me erase all this mess here that I colored on. And these covertices land up on this rectangle. All right, so we have asymptotes that pass through the center, okay? And they, we have covertices, just like we did with the ellipse. Um, however, the covertices are B units, plus or minus, from the center. Oop, B. So if this length is 2A and this length is 2B, then that's going to help me draw these asymptotes because what you need to know is that the asymptotes go through the corners of the rectangle. They go through the center. They go through the corners of the rectangle. And in fact, they're the diagonals of the rectangle. Right? Your covertices will be plus or minus B units from the center. Your vertices are plus or minus A units, right, from the center. Your foci are plus or minus C units from the center. I hope that that makes sense. Okay, what else do we have here? Let me just bring this down a little bit. Oh yeah, this one that I took from the web, just to show you. This one was a little nicer because it actually had the a and the C, it doesn't have the B there. The B is generally the one that's not given. Um, but, oops. You can clearly see that this dis, oops, 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 oops. I'm learning how to use this thing, so. This distance here is A, this distance here is A, right? This distance here is C. So it makes sense that you have the coordinate C0. It makes sense here that you have the coordinates A0. Negative A0, negative C0, okay? And then remember that this is one side of a rectangle and I'm gonna have some asymptotes coming through the center of that center. <laughs> um, and we're gonna have a, a rectangle of length 2A and then the vertical height would be 2B. Okay, more on the asymptotes. Okay. Every parabola, every parabola, every hyperbola has two asymptotes. They intersect at the center. I already said that. They pass through the vertices of a rectangle, which is 2a by 2b. So that's the area of our rectangle. The conjugate axis goes through the center and passes through the covertices. So if you have a transverse axis, let me bring this picture down here. You have a transverse axis that's horizontal, then it's going to make sense. So in this case, it's horizontal, right? The transverse axis is horizontal. So it's going to make sense that my conjugate axis is going to be vertical. And if I had a case where my um, transverse axis was vertical, my conjugate axis would be horizontal. All right, the conjugate axis goes through the center and passes through covertices. The asymptotes of the diagonals of the rectangle pass through the corners of the rectangle. It's not that bad, right? 
Okay, let's look at the formulas. Where's my sheets? I'm sorry, I'm getting lost here. Here they are. All right, let's make this bigger. So I purposefully put the ellipse and the hyperbola so you can see some similarities and some differences because it's really important. Because the second part of this lesson, which will not be today, is gonna be probably the most difficult. That's the one that students complain about the most. And um, it's because you're gonna be given big long formulas and you're going to have to decide is this a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. And it's it's not that easy to, to figure that out sometimes. So anyway, in the ellipse, <clears throat> you know, things changed around a lot, right? But the first thing I want you to notice is that it was the sum, right? It had pluses there. And here, you're always going to have minuses, okay? That's one one big difference. The other thing here is <clears throat> whether you had a vertical or ma a vertical major axis or a horizontal major axis, the x's and the y's stayed in the same place in the numerator, right? It's just the a's and the b's that changed. Down here, it's a little bit nicer because if x comes first, you're going to have a horizontal transverse axis, and if y comes first, it'll be vertical. So the X's and Y's change here and the A's and the B's stay in place, okay? Now, similarities. The nice thing about this is, is that your vertex, your center, and your foci still have the same formula. They're exactly the same as they were in the ellipse, regardless of the axis, okay? Whether it's, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if there if is, yeah, regardless of whether it's a vertical major axis or horizontal, they're the same for each individual one. Now there's a difference here. You actually have equations for those asymptotes, and those equations you're going to need to know. But this year, you're lucky because, well, you're in quarantine, so <laughs> you get to use notes. All right, so we're going to talk about these formulas. They're easy to use. And then one other difference, oops, is this fact right here. So let's try this pencil. This is your typical Pythagorean theorem formula. C squared equals to leg squared plus leg squared. This one here was a little bit different because it was A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. So this one is your true formula for the Pythagorean theorem, so it's a little bit easier to remember. Okay, so let's use the formulae and do a couple of examples and then I will go on to WebAssign and assign to you some homework. So the first one, the first problem says find the standard equation of hyperbola given this picture. So I just pulled this right out of your book. And well this is pretty easy, right, because there's a lot labeled here. What I know, first of all, is that my center is not at zero, zero. Okay, so if your center, let me grab that formula sheet again. Sorry. And let me bring it down here with me. A lot of clicking. All right. So, and I'm just going to put this here. So we're trying to find the standard equation, right? And let me erase all this stuff here. This is all I need is my formula sheet right here. So they're giving you information because that's the, this right here is the picture from the book. So I know that my transverse axis is horizontal, so I need to use this side, right? I need to use this formula. X is coming first. Now the center here is clearly 2, 2. So I can start off by saying X minus 2 squared minus y minus 2 squared equals 1. Now I have to figure out what a and b are. So they're telling you here what a is, but normally they wouldn't. Remember that a is the distance from the center to a vertex, so that's two units. So we're going to do 2 squared. And in the y direction, right, the b, or sorry, the c is the distance from the center to a foci or a focus. So that would be 3 squared. So the formula would be 
x minus 2 squared minus y minus 2 squared over 4 and 9 respectively equals 1. And this is, I really have to get used to using this then. This is a 4, it looked like a 9. And this is the standard equation of that. Yikes, yikes, yikes. This is the standard equation of that hyperbola. Easy stuff. If you were asked for the length of the transverse axis, well, a is 2, so the, the length of the transverse axis would be 2 times 2, or 4. If you wanted to find b, right, so if you wanted to do asymptotes and you wanted to find b, well, that distance, you know, from 2 to 3 here is 1, right? So it would be 2. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> All right, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this because we did that problem. Let me erase this stuff here. And let's look at another problem. <clears throat> so let's sketch one. Oop. So again, I apologize, but I'm getting used to this thing. Okay, so we want to sketch this hyperbola. The first thing you got to do, just like you did with the ellipse, is put it in a standard form. So we have 4, four x squared minus y squared is 16. And remember, this side has to be a 1, so we're going to divide through. So we have 4x squared over 16 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. Now this is nice because we know our center is going to be 0, 0, so I'm just going to put that here. I do not like the thin pen. Okay, now I'm going to divide. 4 goes into itself once, it goes into 16 four times. So what we're going to have is x squared, okay, I can, I can barely take it. Okay, we're going to have x squared. I guess it doesn't matter, over 4 minus y squared <coughs> over 16 equals 1. And that's going to become x squared over 2 squared minus y squared over 4 squared equals 1. So what do I know? I know my transverse axis is going to be horizontal because x comes first. <coughs> I know that a is 2. Excuse me. I know that B is 4. <coughs> My goodness. Let me take a drink. Alright. <clears throat> so I wrote I wrote the equation. Now I have to make the sketch, right? There's a lot of things I know here. <coughs> well, the transverse axis is going to be horizontal and it's going to have a length. <coughs> Goodness, I'm so sorry. I think I had coffee go down the wrong pipe. Um, sorry, we're going to have a horizontal transverse axis. The center is going to be 0, 0. We already established that. Now the vertices are going to be at h uh, plus or minus a comma k. Well, a, this, this is your a and this is your b. So I know I'm going to have a vertex at plus or minus 2. There's one, and there's a vertex. And what I know is my parabola's got to go through that, or my parabola, my hyperbola has to go through that vertex. So look, something like that, All right? My center is right here, blue. OK, the B, or sorry, yeah, B, is um, 4. So that means that my two, three, four. I'm going to have uh, co-vertices here and here, 4 units up and down from the center. And by the way, make this green. My, so this is going to be, this is going to have a length of 4, right? 
a length of four. And, well, <laughs> terrible picture, but <coughs> the vertices actually pass through this thing. <coughs> Dang it. So, now I can draw my asymptotes and they're going to go through the center and through those corners because they're the diagonals of so this is terrible me drawing on this thing I think I like pencil and paper better anyway there's the sketch of the hyperbola and you're going to have to sketch the rectangle and you're going to have to sketch the um, asymptotes oh the foci C right you better find C easy we know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared so c squared is equal to 4 plus 16. Uh, c squared is equal to 20. So if we take the square root, we only need the positive square root. That's 20, which is 2 root 5. So if I come out 2 root 5, I can put a foci there. So this is 2 root 5 comma 0. And I go up 2 root 5 in the negative direction, negative 2 root 5. A zero, yeah, plus or minus. Sorry, I was thinking about length. Okay, and that's how you sketch hyperbola. So I'm going to give you a few simple problems in web assign for today. To try and get those done by the next class section. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later.